You know, it's always interesting taking a look at the World Juniors and specifically the World Juniors, you know, because it's a tournament for guys under the age of 20. So you're taking a look at 18, 19, 20 year olds, guys that were drafted like two years ago, depending on if their birthday is after December of that draft season. And so you normally get yourselves rosters that if you're looking at a team like Team Canada, for example, that are so astronomically stacked with talent and normally, for a lot of the guys that are near the bottom of the lineup, guys that are not near the top, and guys that are given roles that are otherwise not really normal roles they're used to, these players usually end up being, like, just really talented prospects in general, and sometimes you get fans of some NHL teams that are like, hey, our guy made Team Canada, that's cool, but look at that, he's being used in a fourth-line role, even though he was the best player on his CHL team. He was one of the better players in the entire league in production, but look at this, at the World Juniors, he is a bottom six grinder. And you have that every single year. It's not something that I'm saying I have a problem with, it's just something that's there. And like, for the player we're going to be talking about in today's video, I feel like that is a pattern that sort of applied itself in this situation. Let's go over to Madison Square Garden and the Flint Firebird system and talk about one of the Rangers prospects that I feel a lot of Rangers fans were sort of reluctant to get on board with once he was drafted because he wasn't a center. But now they kind of like the guy because, hey, he's turned out to be pretty good. Let's talk today about Brennan Othman, a top prospect back from the 2021 NHL entry draft taken by the Rangers 16th overall. Now, as I said, back when Brennan Othman was drafted, there was some sort of a disagreeance by some people in the Rangers fan base because this was a player that was ranked to go by a lot of people actually a lot later than he had gone at 16th overall. Elite Prospects had him at 21, Future Considerations had him at 22nd, Craig Button had him at 17, McKenzie actually had him at 16, so that's like dead on accurate. And then you had McKean's who had him at 22 as well, but he also is not a center, which is what a lot of Rangers fans were looking for out of that 2021 draft in the first round. He's a left wing player, 19 years old, six feet, 181, and once the draft pick was made, there was somewhat of a conversation saying, hey, is this really the guy the Rangers should have gone for? I don't know. We'll see down the line, I guess. And down the line, I mean, it's been one year since the 2021 draft. I guess you could say this is a one year later type of video, but either way, Brennan Othman has shown off so much ever since getting drafted by the New York Rangers that I think a lot of Rangers fans today would take a look at Othman and say, hey, that is one of my favorite prospects we have in our system today. This is because back when he was drafted in 2021, he was playing out of the Swiss League. EHC Olten was his squad in that year, and he had 16 points in 34 games played. Now, that's not terrible for a 17, 18-year-old guy playing in Switzerland because the OHL had shut down for a year, but it wasn't really a super flashy type of profile, and as the points suggest, he's a kid playing in a men's league, so he's not going to go out there and produce the lights out. He also was a beast for Team Canada at the World Under-18s, where he had six points in seven games played. He showed off in that tournament that he's an absolute sniper. He's able to come down the wing and just pick corners like crazy. It's been a really good skill of his that he developed ever since he was a member of the Don Mills Flyers U16 team, alongside of guys like Brent Clark and Shane Wright. That's a story for another day, though we actually did talk about that a few times in several videos over the years. But this recent season in 2021-2022, as the OHL has returned, Brennan Othman, now named the captain of the Firebirds, went out there and scored 97 points in 66 games played and 50 goals as well. He was well over a point per game. He was over a point per game in the postseason, too. He was a top 10 point producer in the league. He was the second most productive goal guy in the league, too. And he did this immediately after returning from Switzerland. Rangers fans went out there and said, hey, the guy actually is a really good sniper, and we're seeing that in his OHL season this year. This is what the NHL Draft Guide says on Elite Prospects. Osman loves nothing more than to collect the puck on the breakout, lead the charge into the offensive zone, and turn the corner on opposing defenders. He always attacks at full speed, playing a high-paced style and pressuring with that same level of intensity. He pressures on the forecheck, plays the body, and takes good routes to cut off the opposition's attempts at a breakout. Sounds like Rangers hockey to me, baby. I don't know about you. But he also played for Team Canada at the World Juniors this season. Now, sure, he had six points in six games, two goals and four assists, so he's a point-per-game player on the tourney, but I'd be lying to you if I said that this tournament was seen as a particularly good one for Brennan Othman and the services that he provided. 
This is what I'm referring to over here. Let's go over to Statboy Steven's Twitter account. He is a Rangers fan and prospect analyst who went out there and tweeted a quote from Brendan Othman on his experience at the 2022 World Juniors. I know the tournament didn't go as planned, but given the role I was put in, I embraced it, and I was able to show people in the hockey world another side of my hockey play, which is physical and chirpy. I know some people don't like the chirpy side, but it's a side that I carry along with my scoring ability. Now, scoring ability, yeah, he was a point-per-game guy, but this is kind of what he means when he says that it didn't go as planned. The outcome was great, winning a gold medal. But for Brennan Othman, the tournament started with a healthy scratch for Game 1 and being a fourth-line player for Game 2. He then played on the top line, putting up six points, before being put back on the fourth line. He also was pretty chippy, and he was pretty physical. He made some big hits. There was actually a highlight reel collection of videos going around on Twitter of Brennan Othman hits at the World Juniors, which is actually pretty cool, taking a look at just how much of his physical side was shown off at this tournament. And then this reply from Pauly says, I mean, the coach is just getting him ready for when he plays for the Rangers. Haha, <laughs> that's really funny because, yeah, the Rangers play young guys pretty well and then they play him on the fourth line. Ha, huh? that's funny. Now, some people might say it's the penalties, but the guy had one penalty in six games, so it's not really that bad. This is what Statboy Steven replies in the Twitter thread. You're diminishing his production if you say it's just because he played with McTavish. He set up McTavish twice with a primary assist, and the secondary assist on McTavish was an outlet pass into the neutral zone for Connor Bedard. It's not as if he was just on the ice for a bunch of goals and had meaningless secondary assists. Also, the moment that Brendan Othman was demoted to the fourth line, Canada conceded four straight goals after going up 5-1 against Finland. Not really a great decision by David Cameron. The only point that Brennan Othman got where he didn't impact the play was a McTavish deflection off a Thompson shot against Czechia. That's about it. Also, McTavish wasn't involved in either of Othman's two goals. And so, really, this was another one of these situations where you have a guy that was a top OHL player. He's top two in the league in goals, and he's top ten in the league in points, top seven actually if you want to get specific, and he's being played in the fourth line for the World Juniors. He is a healthy scratch for the World Juniors. Now, I get it. He's got another year of eligibility because the World Juniors actually starts up again in January, and he'll be 19 turning 20 once that tournament goes on, so he's eligible for next year, people, but it is kind of interesting just taking a look at that same pattern, bringing itself back up again. Sometimes you have guys that are at the top of their league in points, but because they're a little bit younger, because they're not all too experienced, they're being played in the fourth line, and that's not to disrespect any of the guys that were also on Team Canada that happened to play a little bit more. Heck, the guy that was the best player on the team, Mason McTavish, he was drafted in the same season as Brendan Othman. In fact, he played on the same team as Othman did last year, or excuse me, two seasons ago in Switzerland. He was also on EHC the Olten because the OHL shut down. So there was a pretty good little connection there between Osman and McTavish, but it wasn't really to the extent that you could say that, oh, McTavish is the reason why Osman had points. At the end of the day, this is a player that's so gosh darn good at scoring against his own age range that just kind of got given the short end of the stick in terms of deployment in this year's World Juniors. Now, he won gold, so I'm not going to go out there and say that, oh, Brandon Osman is disappointed with how he played. But obviously, it's not what he's used to being played on the fourth line and all that. And I haven't even gotten into the entire thing with Czechia, where he had a whole bunch of hits against that team in that same game. And then in the handshake line, somebody was kind of pushing him away because they're kind of pissed off with the way that he was playing. It's kind of funny how that goes on in international hockey tournaments. But at the end of the day, Brendan Othman is a pretty good prospect. He can score. He can fly down the wing. He can create plays. And he can put up points but he can also hit. He can also be pretty physical. He can also be pretty chippy or chirpy, whichever word you want to use. They're both applicable in this situation, in my opinion. And so for Rangers fans, what you're looking at here is a guy that if he actually makes the team this year, which I don't really think he's going to do, I think he's probably going to go back to the OHL, dominate that league, be one of the top players in the entire CHL, and then play for Team Canada again at the World Juniors in January before making the Rangers hopefully sometime in 2023, 2024. But at the end of the day, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this player. And if you're a Rangers fan, what do you think his ceiling is going to be at the NHL level? I could definitely see a top six forward out of this guy. I could definitely see a 20, 25 goal scorer out of this guy who maybe goes out there and produces a pretty significant amount of physical damage as well. But let me know your thoughts as to what you think Osman could be at the NHL level and what impressed you the most out of this year's World Junior Showcase of talent from him. Sure, you knew he could score. He displayed that with the Flynn Firebirds and at the World Under-18s last year. 
but did you know he could hit and be as physical as he has been? Talk to the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls 99. And bye.